who can try the poor. You know, for many families, when kids go back to school, that just means that they're going to be out of the house for a few hours each day. But for some Twin Cities parents, that means that the kids are going to college and possibly leaving the house for good. That's something that journalist and TV personality Roxanne Battle knows about all too well. It's part of her book, Pockets of Joy. She joins us now to share advice on how to handle that tough transition in life. Roxanne is here. Hey. Be here. Thank you. You uh, you write about this, yeah. and you you write about it because you've had an experience with it. You're going through it right now. Tell went, us about your experience. Went through it right. I have one son. You have three kids, I right? Three. So you got air spare and one over there. <laughs> right? that's like, yes, I, got, that's right, I just have the one, right? And so I mean, by the time when he was 16 years old, I started willing up and crying, and oh my gosh, he's going, he's leaving, uh, right? I mean, that's yeah. That was the day he came home from the hospital. That's there he is in grade school, and then um, he just recently graduated from college. Oh, so wow. I got through it. I'm here to say you'll get through it you will survive it and the beautiful thing about that kind of empty nester transition is mm -hmm. if you open yourself up to it you open your life up to more joy both for your children and for yourself boy there are parents out there that know their kid is leaving they have the date marked on the calendar in August when they're driving out to school with them and all I've that been there, done that. So we need to talk to them down here yeah and uh, the most important step you would suggest is you can't deny that this is happening right. you have to embrace it and accept it you have to accept it this is not the time to get out the baby album and start looking at all the little baby pictures oh, so right. it's not. That's a bad time to do that. You <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the time to do it. It's happening, you know. And you know, positive psychology, mindfulness, neurologists all say that the brain tr sort of processes difficulty, not the big life kind of things, obviously, right. but difficult moments for about 20 minutes. Huh. After that, you're just replaying it and reliving it. Oh, so your brain is ready to move on. Your brain is designed to problem solve. It's designed for change and transition. So let it do its work. So accept the change. Instead of investing all that energy feeling bad and crying, which is, we'll talk about crying in a minute, but, but invest that energy to moving on and accepting and being excited about this new life that's about to happen and occur and the, all the discovery that you'll have. But you tried pushing it away for a Ooh. while and then you hit a breaking point. Yes, what happened I did. There? Personally, like, with, like, I started crying when he was 16 years old, right? He's not leaving for two years and I'm starting to cry, okay. right? And then I thought, get a grip because we're all embarrassed. We're embarrassed that, this is gonna, that we feel this emotion. We're, we're supposed to just suck it up and deal with it, but it's okay. So I stuffed and stuffed and stuffed. Finally, one day, I locked myself in the bathroom. I took a, a bang boombox speaker I took my favorite praise and worship song and I played that song for an hour with a box of Kleenex oh, and Lord. just let it let all it out. out let, let it, it out let it flush it out. out and I felt better and science backs me up there's a bi biochemist from this Minnesota Dr. William Fry who wrote a book that said that tears actually release positive hormones and you reduce stress in your system by crying so yes you can feel good by allowing yourself to feel better by having that cry so yeah. that your body can then get into a position to deal with the new life change. I remember this. I went to Cal uh, school in California. My, I lived in Pennsylvania, and my mom and I wept. As we hugged each other in college, we wept. Yeah. And we're just like, I, I was afraid to leave. She was afraid not to have any kids left it's in the house. It's hard. You've got to make positive connections to get past yes. that. My mom did that. Explain to those who are about to face yes. this. How do you do this? There's other moms. There are other moms. You know, maybe it's a yoga class. Maybe it's a coffee clutch in the morning. Maybe it's that class that you always wanted to take. But fill that time up with other positive people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, and this is true for any kind of transition you're going through, you avoid toxic and negative people. Yes. Okay. More important then than ever. More important then than ever. But the degree to which, Steve, we are happy in life is the degree to which we navigate change and positive connections. People who help us see this new period of our life, this new time of our life, who can bring some joy into our life, some positivity, some optimism. Those are going to be the people that we need to surround ourselves with during this time. Very quickly, we have about 20 seconds. You also say it's important. Start circling dates on the calendar when you're going to see Set them Set a again. date. Is it parent weekend? Is it homecoming? Is it the end of semester? Is it Thanksgiving? Is it Christmas? You will see that baby again, and they'll have all sorts of wonderful, joyful stories to and tell boy, you. When you put it on the calendar, you can get excited about yes. it. You don't have to feel anxious about That's it. You can be excited when it comes. That's exactly Roxanne, right. Roxanne, it's always so oh, good to you. talk with you. You are just a little bit of joy on Iowa Couch. You can go to SwingCityFive.com and click on Fun for a link to pick up Roxanne's book. It's called Pockets of Joy. You know you need it. Go and get it. Also, coming up this September, she's going to be at Mama's Happy Artisan Market in Indi at uh, Independence for a book signing. We'll put a link up to that on our website so that you can uh, hang out with her there. You'll feel better after you talk with her. Trust me on that. <laughs> Twin Cities Live reporter Emily Engberg.